Creating beautiful and engaging, well-polished videos can be challenging, but with CapCut, they make it that much easier to do so. In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys where to get CapCut, how to download and install it, also how to set up your first project, modifying the actual settings for it to make sure we have it set up correctly, editing that clip, and then also putting some polish on it like effects and subtitles, and then what the best render settings will be for CapCut. Let's go and dive in. First things first, we're gonna to wanna to visit CapCut.com so we can download the desktop editor. And then from here, just select the download for Windows. Once you save that and get that downloaded, we're going to want to install it. So then make sure you go to your download folder and then click on it. We're just going to want to hit agree with CapCut, install now. So once you open up CapCut, it's going to bring you to this screen. You can do start new project. You also have your recent projects or your previous projects here. You can either show them in a grid or a list. You can also search for them as well. So make sure that you save them with keywords in it so it's easily defined. You can also check out the templates over here, but just to keep it simple, we're just going to go ahead and start a brand new project from scratch. Now, before going any further, we're just going to go ahead and hit modify over here. This will allow us to change the name and also set the actual ratio for the project itself. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and rename the file. Now down here for ratio, it's really gonna depend, are you making a vertical format video or a regular horizontal video? Keep in mind, this tutorial is gonna be geared towards vertical, but everything you learn in this can also be applied to doing just regular horizontal videos. Since we're doing vertical, we're gonna go ahead and change the ratio to nine by 16. Resolution, we're gonna keep that as to adapted. For frame rate, most people record in 60. Uh, if you record in 30, then make sure you drop it down to 30, but since we record in 60 we're going to jump it up to 60 frames per second leave color space as rec 709 as that just means standard color then we're going to hit save now once we have that saved we're going to want to go ahead and take our media and drag it in so what we're going to do is take this clip just drag it over to import and our clips imported then from here we're going to go ahead and drag it down to the timeline now before we start editing the easiest but the best tip i have for anyone that's learning how to edit is going to be learn your shortcuts knowing what shortcuts do and how they can help save you time is going to be crucial being able to delete large chunks of clips that you don't need or being able to split them in the proper section is going to save you so much time in the future. So the first thing you do when you get an editing program, change your shortcuts. So what we're gonna do now to change our shortcuts is in this top right-hand corner right here, we have the shortcut button. Now I've already changed this from the default, so I'm just gonna go over what I changed and why I changed it. So split, I changed this to shift X. The reason why I changed split to shift X is that Whenever you actually have a clip highlighted, it will go ahead and split that clip wherever the playhead is at. So for split all, I put that as X. And the reason why is that it doesn't matter if you only have just one thing selected as far as the clip goes or one thing on your timeline, it will cut everything right where the playhead is at. So that means text, animations, layers, anything that the playhead is touching, it will create a cut right where it's at. And then the next important shortcut is going to be delete left and delete right, which is going to be Q and W. These are going to delete anything that is either left or right of where the playhead is at on the actual timeline. And then lastly, we wanna be able to delete a clip by itself without affecting other clips. We're gonna put that as delete, which is gonna be E. Now, the reason why I made this E is because I'm trying to keep things as close to WASD as I can because I'm a gamer, probably like you are as well, and that is probably the easiest way for me to actually keybind all of my shortcuts that I need. Now, this is just what I like. Once you actually get more familiar with the program, you can change these shortcuts however you want, and you can even have multiple different shortcuts if you really wanted to as well. For me, this is good so you just make sure one of you do make those changes hit save and then we're going to go back to the timeline now if you want to do a vertical video this is going to be the easiest way that i found to do it inside of CapCut. if you're doing a horizontal video then you can go ahead and just skip this but i would still suggest watching it because this is actually some pretty valuable information when working with multiple clips on the timeline that are need to be synced so first things first we're going to need a couple layers because we want our webcam our background and our gameplay so go ahead and select the clip hold control and c to copy it and then we're going to hit control v a couple times times to get them on the timeline. All right, and then we're gonna delete this bottom most clip. So this way we have our top, which is gonna be our webcam, the middle, which would be the gameplay, and then the bottom, which will just be the background. Now to go ahead and select that as so, you're gonna wanna go ahead and select the webcam right here. Now over in the basic area on this right-hand side, go ahead and scroll all the way down. And you're gonna see where it says layers. Now for layers, it goes from one being the bottom clip all the way to the highest number, which will be your top clip. So we're gonna go ahead and make this our webcam. And then we're gonna go ahead and select the middle clip and we're gonna select as two, because that is gonna be our gameplay. And then we're gonna take this bottom one and leave that as one. Now, once we have that set up, we're gonna go ahead and wanna get everything situated the way that we want it to. So what we'll do is we will just click and drag this inside of the box and enlarge it. We're gonna go ahead and make this our webcam layer. So we're gonna wanna apply an actual overlay or a mask to it. So that way we can actually cut it out and have it look nice and good. So you wanna head over here to mask on the right hand side, and then we're gonna go ahead and you can pick whichever you want. If you want a rectangle, if you want a heart, then you can do that. We're just gonna to wanna to take this and we're gonna to wanna to fit it to our webcam. 
And then once we're done with that, we're just going to go ahead and drag it into place where we want it. And you can even resize it by clicking these corners and dragging it in or out. And then once we get it to where we want, we will go ahead and leave it right there. And then we'll go ahead and do something similar to the next one. So this is going to be the gameplay. So depending on what game you want, I play Apex. So a lot of the attention is in the center of the screen. So we're going to go ahead and expand that just a bit. So that way the gameplay is taking up most of the screen. And now we're going to go ahead to the bottom clip. And we're going to go ahead and expand this to where it encompasses the entire screen. Because it is going to be a little bit distracting if you leave it this way, we're going to just going to add a quick effect to this to make sure that it's just our background and that it's not taken away from our actual video. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look for the actual blur effect underneath effects. So we're going to scroll all the way down to lens. And then here we're just going to find blur and we're going to drop it down on our bottom timeline. And then from here, if you look at the right, you can now adjust it and change it to however you want. So if you want to make it extremely blurry or not, usually for something like this, I'd probably put it around about 30%. This way, there's not too much blur, but it's also not allowing that bottom clip to steal the attention of everything else. Now, once we have these set up like this, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of these. You're going to right click all of the clips and you're going to do create compound clip. Now, what this does, is it basically takes all of them and then squishes it down. We can uncompound it afterwards in case we want to change and move things around later on. But just to keep it simple and make editing much faster and easier, we're just going to compound that clip so it's all in one line. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to temporarily take this clip and we're going to drag it down to this bottom line right here. And the reason why is because if we do this, when I hit Q, it deletes everything and it moves it over and gets rid of that empty space. This saves you a good amount of time instead of having to readjust the clip. If we didn't do that and I just split the clip here and let's say if I deleted that, we now have this empty space, which means every single time I do that, I then have to move this over and then reconnect it to that one and hope that I don't move it too far over or if I don't like, you know, get it right and move it onto a different track. It's just going to be a real pain in the butt so instead what we're going to do is we are going to take that and we're going to move this to here so that way our delete left and delete right automatically get rid of that empty space for us all right let's go ahead and check out this clip and see where we want to cut it now let's just say for this sake we want to go ahead and kind of speed up the pace with this just to make sure that we're capturing our audience attention we're going to go ahead and just kind of cut out that time in air and a little bit of time before the actual pad so what we'll do is we'll take our playhead here and we'll just drag it over and then we're going to go ahead and find the spot right before we actually hit the jump pad so as we're running to the jump pad right here i'm going to now take the q button and i'm going to press it so that way i delete everything to the left like so so now our clip actually starts right here and then just to help speed it up a little bit since people already know we're jumping in the air we're just going to go ahead and hit x to create a split right here so now technically the beginning of this clip is right here and we're just going to kind of go a little bit further and right as i go to take out the shotgun we're going to hit q so that way it's just a little bit faster a little bit higher pace and now we're kind of kind of let this play out right here just because there's not a whole lot of like downtime with it so honestly i like the way that this clip is actually made now let's say if you wanted to cut out the end where I got really hype, you can go ahead and put your playhead right at the very end and then hit W and now it removes it. Another good shortcut to know actually is going to be control Z, which is going to be to undo what you just did. So in case you delete something you didn't mean to, that's also another very good shortcut that I probably should have told you guys about, but I'm sorry. Now let's say if you wanted to go ahead and just kind of like get rid of this space right here where I'm running into the building, we can hit the X right before I start getting loud, which you can kind of see, which by by the way, another good shortcut for zooming in is if you hold control and then scroll wheel in, it spreads it out just a little bit. But right here, we can see I kind of get loud on the actual clip and we're going to hit X to create that cut right there. Now what we're going to do is once the deaths come through, we're just going to go ahead and hit W. So that way it kind of just leads right into it. So that's something you can do to kind of speed it up. I personally like it the way it is. So we're going to leave it like this. What we do want to do is I do want to add a couple of effects. Now, let's say if we want to go ahead and make the shotgun kind of hit more important whenever I actually do land this shot right here, we're going to go into effects. So we're going to look for something to kind of emphasize that shotgun hit and make it just a little bit more impactful. So vibration flash, we're going to see what it looks like and see if this kind of emphasizes the shotgun hit without taking away from the clips. So we're going to just click this drag it down above the actual area and now we're just going to go ahead and back this up and play it through now to just cut this one layer we're going to go ahead and hit shift x all right so we're going to find where the second one comes in which i believe is right here so now we have this where the effect starts where we want it and then once that shotgun hit goes off we're going to just line this up with that all right so there we go so now we added kind of like a vibration effect to make the shotgun hit a little bit more impactful now on top of effects, you can also use stickers. So let's say if we want to make this hype moment right here a little bit more hype than it was, let's go ahead and go to stickers. And we have this like kind of anime emphasis sticker right here that we can use. So let's just go ahead and line it up to where it's encompassing the whole screen. Now let's go back to effects 
And maybe let's just do the flash and shake and we'll kind of drag that down and we'll put that right there. So now we have so now we kind of use a sticker and also we just used an effect to make this a little bit more hype than what it was before. Another thing that we want to do to kind of help polish off this video is we want to add subtitles to it. A lot of times subtitles help engage your audience and keep them reading it. So it adds another layer of motion and another graphic to the actual clip. So let's go ahead and add those in right now. So what you want to do is navigate to the top left and go to text. And then on this left hand side, do auto captions. And then we're going to go ahead and create an English and we're going to hit create. So our cap cut is going through and it's trying to listen to what you're saying inside the clip and it's going to generate captions based off of that. Now, keep in mind, it's not always perfect the way that it does it. So we're just going to go ahead and check them and make sure that they are correct. So this first caption right here is what one of the characters is saying in the game. We probably don't want to go ahead and caption that. So we're just going to highlight this and then we're going to press E to delete that one item on the timeline. Now we're going to scroll over. Now keep in mind, if you're playing with a friend and you want to keep their captions in there, you're more than welcome to. For this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on what I'm saying and we're going to emphasize those with the subtitles. So for this, it says tractor, which was not said. So we're going to go ahead and just drag this over and we're going to shorten it because that's not correct. So we're going to go ahead and listen to this clip and see what I said. Oh my God. It's... Okay. So to fix this, because really all I say here is OMG, we're just going to click on this and then we're just going to highlight over here on the right hand side and just put OMG and that's it. Now keep in mind, this same panel is also used to stylize your text. So you can come down here and you can pick whatever you want for different colors, different sizes. We can increase the font size if we want to, we can even move it around. So this part is basically just where that uh, person I was playing with said something. So let's go, go ahead and delete it. All right. That got that perfect. Let's check out the next ones. Oh my God, that was nuts. All right, so that actually came out pretty decent. So what we're going to do is we're just going to delete this nice part right here. Cause again, we're going to focus on what I'm saying for this clip. And it looks like, again, we're just going to follow this little right here, the sound wave. And we're just going to start the playhead right there since that's when I start talking. Oh my God, that was nuts. All right, and there we go. So technically we actually have all the captions and subtitles set up the way that we want it. Now, a couple things you could do here, go ahead and first highlight this. So now we can go ahead and stylize it. So in case we want to make it bold, if we want to go ahead and change the color of it. So since it's us talking, we can make it green or yellow or even just white since it's us. I know a lot of times people like to change it based on the person that's talking. Now, another thing we, we can do is we can actually add animation. So if you go to this animation tab, the top right hand corner, we can actually now do pop up. We can do side up. We can actually do a different in and out. I know a lot of people like to use the bounce in. All right, now that we have this animation, we can actually change the speed of it. So we can drop this down just a little bit to make it just have more oh. bounce to it or seem like it has more bounce. Oh. And if you're happy with it, then you can leave it the way that it is. Okay, so to recap, we actually have subtitles right now. We have effects. We also have some motion and stuff like that in there as well. We can just leave this clip the way that it is if we want to. Now, I will show you guys a transition really quick, even though I don't know if it fits in this video, but all you have to do is just go to transition up here in the left-hand corner, find a transition that you like. So let's say if we like the shake one, we can go ahead and split this clip, add a shake to it. So that way, whenever it goes into the hype moment, just adds a little bit more emotion. Now, again, I don't know if I'd personally leave it there, but for the sake of this video, we will. Now, one last thing before we render this video out, we're actually gonna go ahead and take a look at music. So CapCut actually has its own music library. Some of it is stuff you can also find on TikTok. Personally, I like to render the video out without music so that way I can pick what songs I want whenever I am uploading it anyways. The only time that I'll bake a song into the actual export is whenever I'm doing something for YouTube for the YouTube shorts. But personally, I have an Epidemic Sound subscription, which I highly recommend to other people. So that way you can guarantee that on YouTube, you won't get hit with a copyright strike and you won't be demonetized. So just for the, keeping it simple, I'm gonna go ahead and just export the video out without music. For exporting, you wanna go ahead to the top right hand corner and click export. Now for this, for resolution, we're gonna go ahead and click 1080p. Even if it's a 4K clip, I suggest doing 1080p because it'll go ahead and give it better compression inside of this program versus when you upload it to social media. For bitrate, we're gonna go, wanna go ahead and go to customize versus recommended. The reason why is because now we can choose a constant bitrate. The reason why you want a constant bitrate means the entire video is rendered out at the exact same bitrate. So you don't have any difference in qualities during this video. What we're also going to do is for the kill bits per second, put it at 20,000. This might be overkill, but it's high enough to where it should come out with a clean video and it's not making the file too large. So I'm just going to leave it at 20,000. For codec, we're going to do H.264. For format, we're gonna do MP4. And then for frame rate, since we recorded it in 60 frames a second, we are also going to render this out in 60 frames a second. Now, if you scroll down, there's two more options you have here. You can do export audio. 
which gives you a separate audio file from what you just made. And you can also do caption export, which is basically just going to be a transcription of basically your video. And then you can also run a copyright strike check, which we're just going to skip because again, we're going to add our music in afterwards. Now, once we're done, hit export and then there you go. It's done. So now we can go into our folder. We can see B Paula is awesome. We can double click it. Oh my God. It's And there we go. There's the clip that we made. And there we go. That was the basics of how to edit with CapCut. My name is IMB Paula. If you guys want more tutorials, go ahead and check out our YouTube channel. But until next time, happy creating.